Greetings, folks. Professor Fiore here once again. Today, we are going to talk about using an active load in our amplifiers. What's an active load? Essentially, it's a load that's created with transistors. So if you think of a simple BJT amplifier, up in the collector where your biasing resistor would be, you would have some kind of transistor affair, which we'll get into in just a sec. So that's convenient if you're doing, you know, an integrated circuit. It's easy to make transistors. The practical side is, as you're going to see, we can get more gain than if we just use the biasing resistor. So let's just dive right into it, shall we? One quick caution, though. If you haven't looked at the video on current mirrors, make sure you look at that before we go into here, because we're going to make use of those. In any case, we're going to start with a little differential amplifier using PNPs. Why PNPs? Well, as you're going to see, it's going to be maybe a little, hopefully a little bit more obvious what's happening down in the collector when we get there. So I'm just trying to, trying to keep this on the simple side. Instead of having a fancy current source up here, I'm just using an idealized current source, right? That's our tail current, which right now is set up for two milliamps. Feeds the um, individual PNPs over here. And then we've got a couple of 5K resistors for bias. And I have a, a very large 10 mega ohm resistor out here, just so there's really no loading effect. And these uh, collector resistors are really, really going to set the gain. So if you did a real quick calculation here, right, this 2 milliamp current source should split evenly 1 milliamp down each side. So the I, R prime E's for these things, 26 millivolts over IE, would be roughly 26 ohms each. And the gain for this, because it's a, a single-ended input, single-ended output, the gain for this is going to be the collector resistance, or the AC load, if you want to think about it generically, divided by 2 times R prime E. So that would be roughly 5K, right? 5K in parallel, 10 meg, virtually 5K, divided by 2 times the 26, or 52. So we're going to get a gain of a little less than 100, ideally. You know, 90-something, whatever it works out to. Um, but again, that's sort of an ideal thing. All right? And just to check it, you know, we'll just go in and we'll do um, a little transient analysis here just to see what we get. All right? I mean, this is really nothing new. Okay? All right. Let me move this over here a little bit so we can see. And all right. So we're getting basically 80 millivolts out of this thing, peak. Okay? Uh, you can see it's nice and symmetrical. There's no obvious DC offset. You know, this all looks pretty good. The gain's a little shy compared to what we would hope for in the ideal case, but it's still looking just fine. All right? Okay, so that's a simple resistive load. Now, let's go take a look at what happens with an active load. So what we're going to do here is we're going to chuck this uh, collector resistance, and instead what we're going to do is put, a, ideally, a constant current source here. Why a constant current source? Well, if you think about it, the actual current coming down through here when there's an AC signal is the DC bias current plus whatever this AC current is driving on top of it. So if I can get a current, a fixed current source out of here, down in this area, then what that would mean is the AC current, think of Kirchhoff's current law, the AC current would be forced out to the load rather than having a current split, a current divider here, right? An AC current coming down through here, some's going to go this way and some of it's going to go this way. So if I can force all the AC current out this way, I'll get a bigger voltage. The other way of thinking about it is the current, um, the current source would have a higher internal resistance than the RC value. So you would treat that internal resistance as the collector resistance, right? And obviously, if it's a bigger value, you're going to get a bigger gain. So let's take a look. All right, so here's our original circuit. Here is essentially the same circuit, right? I've got the same 2 milliamp current source, same transistors, except instead of this collector resistor out here where the output is, I have two transistors, right? Of course, this one, this is back connected between the base and the collector, so this is just a diode. Remember, it's very easy to make diodes by creating transistors and then shorting the collector base. And physically, you know, if we were going to make an integrated circuit, these two transistors would be right next to each other, and we'd have very, very, very good matching, right? So this is just an NPN current mirror, all right? Now, if you remember the way the current mirror works, whatever current's coming down through here is mirrored, is reflected over on this side. 
So ideally, I'd have a milliamp coming out here and a milliamp coming out here for my two milliamp current source. Milliamp, milliamp. So this milliamp comes down here and that is reflected over here. So any AC current that we throw in, right, is going to get forced out into the load, right? In this case, load number two. Unlike what happens here, where we get some current down through RC2 and then some current through the load. So, you know, what is the internal resistance of, uh, you know, this, this current mirror, of this transistor, T5? Mm, you know, it depends on the device and depends on how good this uh, current mirror is. You know, it could be tens of Ks, it could be hundreds of Ks. All right. Okay, well, you know, let's see what we get. So what I did is I just piggybacked the signal back to the generator. So these two circuits are having the same exact input signal. And other than the active load, they are identical circuits. All right. So I'm going to do a transient analysis and we can see just how big V load 2 is compared to V load 1. Remember that in the original circuit, just using the 5K, we got a gain of you know, around 80. Okay, so let's see what we got. Do a little transient analysis. Boom. Okay, so here's our signal. Let's get uh, a little legend over here. So V load number one, which was the original circuit, right? This is the, the 80 millivolts that we were expecting. Okay, from last time, you can see there's 100, 200, 300. So no change there, obviously, as there should, shouldn't be. And clearly much bigger. You know, looks like we're getting maybe somewhere in the 700 or so millivolt range. I'll just put a probe on here. Let's see what we get. All right, so that's just shy of 700 millivolts. All right, so in the first case, we had a gain of about 80. Now we're getting a gain of, you know, pretty close to 700. You know, not quite. So um, not quite a factor of 10, but hey, that's pretty good when you think about it, right? All we did is just swap out the resistor with this current mirror. And like I said, in an integrated circuit, this would be very easy to make. So yeah, let's do this, right? You're going to see this a lot when you look at op amps, right? You know, the integrated circuit is going to be made with mostly transistors. So you're going to see this kind of effect very nicely, all right? Now, if you had an NPN, a uh, uh, differential amplifier up here, right? This piece would be up here, okay, in the collector, which means you would wind up using PNP transistors, right? So that's why I use the PNPs over here so that we would have NPNs over here because, you know, in the preceding videos, we looked at an NPN version of a current mirror, but you can make a PNP version of a current mirror. Same thing, you just have to flip it. Well, this brings up an interesting question, right? If this current source, this idea of using the current mirror, effectively gives us a much higher resistance. I mean, this thing is probably somewhere in the 50K ohm range compared to this 5K because we're getting about 10 times the gain. Um, would a better current source, in other words, a better current mirror, give us improved performance beyond that? Well, what do you think? Let's find out. So, original circuit, modified circuit with the simple active load, Here's another active load, but this is a much more accurate version, right? So here we have two transistors and two diodes. And again, if you look back at the current mirror video, you know, I walk through these variations. You can see just how good these are. And we, we had shown in that video that this was an improvement over this, right? The mirroring effect over here was much more effective than it was here. It's much more accurate. This is more, more ideal. Okay, so let's see what we got. You know, we had 80, we had 700 millivolts, 80 millivolts, 700 millivolts. What are we going to get now? So once again, we'll come up and do a transient analysis. Boom. Alrighty, V load, the light green, V load two is this sort of medium green, and the red is V load three, our new version. So let's put a probe on that. Tell you what, we'll go for the first one. You know, this is, uh, bring this over here so you can see a little better. So like I said, this is going to be around 80, okay, 80 millivolts peak, thereabouts. Okay, no change there. And then the second circuit, we were looking at nearly 700, so there it is. And I'm getting like 687 millivolts, so far so good. 
And now on the super fancy current source, current mirror, well, I'm getting 1.114 volts. All right, you know, so you could think 1100 millivolts compared to the 80 compared to the, the uh, 700. So yeah, we're clearly getting an increase in the signal, right? So really focus in on this sort of olive green, which was the original resistor version, and this maroon kind of colored version, which is our new super spiffy version, all right? But even the simple two device active load still give us nearly uh, an order of magnitude increase in gain. All right, so you know you can go a little further and squeak out a bit more, but even this is more than sufficient, right, to really see an improvement in this circuit. So, you know, what do we find? Well, you know, an active load is obviously made of just transistors. You could say transistors and diodes, but again, we make diodes by creating a transistor and just shorting out the collector base junction. So, for integrated circuits, that's very handy having just active devices. And we have this nice effect of getting a, um, uh, a larger gain out of the system, okay? Now, this is not to say that you wouldn't have changes in, let's say, the frequency response. That would probably be the case. You know, we, we, can, um, we can check that out, all right? So I'll just come up here. We can, we can do an AC analysis, okay? Boop. Sound effects. All right, so you can clearly see V load three. You know, again, the gain is in decibels over here. This is over 60 dB. We're getting, you know, what is this? Like 56 and change, almost 57 for the second circuit. And the, and the first circuit here is below 40, you know, 35, 36, 37, 38 dB. Um, but you can see that that circuit with the lowest gain does have the widest bandwidth, right? It does go up to the highest frequency, All right? These things roll off earlier all right that depends again on the construction of the of the current sources the transistors you're using practically speaking there are layout considerations with straight straight capacitance and so forth okay but bottom line active devices higher gain right so when you look at a schematic for an op amp don't expect to see this don't expect to see these resistors expect to see something like this or even something like this and in your mind, you just have to remember, you have to learn to replace that in your mind with, okay, it's a load, right? I can just think of this as an equivalent resistance, right? So these kind of fall back to, in a simplified version, something like that, right? But the current mirror stabilizes, keeps that current constant. So again, through Kirchhoff's current law, it's basically forcing the AC current out to the load, right? This one happens to be better at that than this one. And this one, of course, much better than this. All right, great. Any questions? Leave them down in the comments, and I'll see you next time.